Wait, what? You just now oh, started? I knew on on OBS on OBS. Oh, oh! I was like, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, dude, we're good, we're good. We just did the whole thing. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode six of Friends. Wow, that's like a month and a half of Friends. If we and and every week, no less. Unbelievable. Yeah. What's going on, buddy? You're doing great. I'm Frank Lepore. Dude, I'm just... I play Magic. And this I'm... is. Oh, oh. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. That's my pal Frank Lepore, and That's I'm right. Andrew Cram. I play Magic, but not nearly as well. I work in music. Mm-hmm. And this is our podcast about literal nothing. So, yep. if you guys are looking for insightful takeaways, you might get some, but also you might not. You might not. But you might. I think we've had some you insightful might. takeaways. Yeah, last week was pretty woke. Today, I just just before this podcast, I had a really awkward encounter. I'm so glad because I was thinking about it and I'm like, man, I like to keep these natural. I like to just, you know, rip it off the top, not, not make it too scripted. It almost like, shower, yeah. And I was like, what the flip am I going to talk about? This? <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to talk about today? Do you blow dry your hair? No. You just let it naturally dry? I don't have a dryer. A blow dryer. <laughs> your, se- your, your hair seems way too thick to let naturally dry. It feels like it would take six hours for your hair to naturally dry. Yeah, it took about that. Yeah, probably three. When did you... <laughs> When did you shower? Probably two, three hours ago. It's still a little wet. Oh my god, that's insane! Like I couldn't stand it. I'm like, I, I feel like I can't effectively style my hair if it's wet. <clears throat> you can't. No, I just wear a hat and hang out for a minute. So I just yeah. wear a hat and hang out. For... <laughs> By a minute, he means you know three hours. Just three hours or so. Just a quick minute. So, it's funny. Right before this happened, I was like, I don't know if you saw my post on Facebook. Did you see my post? I'm not a big Facebook guy. I know. That's why I figured. I had a post, and I was talking to Kate earlier, and yeah. we were typing the word chonker, because we were talking about my fat cat. <laughs> and I made a, I, I accidentally almost typed chinker mm-hmm. with an I, because it's like, neither of them are real words, so if you mm-hmm. mess it up, it's not going to autocorrect for you, right? Sure. And then I, I posted on Facebook afterwards, and I'm like, man... Sometimes you type chonker and then you accidentally type chinker and boy, that's a whole different kind of day you're going to have. <laughs> and I was like, that's funny, right? Because it's like, that's, it's such, it's so weird how such a simple, like funny meme word can be, can turn into such an offensive word with just a different letter. Totally. Right. Absolutely. <clears throat> right. And like one, like everyone thought, like people thought it was funny and they got what I was saying. And someone was like, you know, someone put the that's racist meme up. And I was like, that's true. It is racist. That's, that's the point. Yeah. We're literally making a joke about being like, yo, it sucks to like, oh my God, what if I type literally one letter that's, and that's so yes. far from who I am. That is exact. That was the exact point I was trying to convey. And then my friend, a friend of mine said, big yikes, dude, delete this. Hmm. And this was the point where I was napping, where where I was indisposed. So I, I didn't check it for like an hour. But then when I did finally see it, they unfriended me. Wow. That's what I thought. I was like, that's super aggressive, man. Like, it was a really bad that's feeling aggressive. because, like, not only do you think I'm, like, some kind of shitty person because of this post. When I'm really saying that, like, holy crap, it's so awkward how close you can come. Like, you, exactly what you said. It's so awkward how close you can come to saying something shitty by one misplaced letter, right? <clears throat> right. So then <laughs> drawing, it's now racist. It's now that you're the bad guy for literally drawing attention to the fact that something gets so close. Right. It's like, I couldn't even say the word even to express that it's a shitty word to accidentally type almost. Right. Like, and it's the thing that bugged me the most was that like our entire friendship, like my entire friendship with this person and like, we weren't yeah. best friends, but we were like, we followed each other on social media for years. And mm-hmm. like, I, I, whenever she posts something, I always try to support her and like whatever. But like, it was really weird that like the entire like value of our friendship and my, even like, like my moral fiber <laughs> was like weighed against this single post. And they were like, well, this guy's just clearly shitty. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it's funny. Cause it's like, it's one person, right? And it's like, it's someone who doesn't know me tremendously well, but for some uh-huh. reason it still fucking hurts. Like it still feels shitty. Uh-huh. It's like, it's like this person you're like, Hey, wait, 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 you got the wrong impression of me. I, I want to like correct you and be like, Hey, please don't think this of me because that's really like the farthest thing from who I am. Well, it's just a whole new wave of like how 
freaking ridiculous canceled culture has gotten because I know that you are one of the most accepting like I mean you're you're pretty far on like the left side of like don't be shitty to anyone and everybody has equal rights and like you really stand up for that right there's been posts so, where she's posted like about guys being shitty and I'm like yeah that dude's just probably not worth talking like I'll, I'll like literally you know see her perspective and like I'm like yeah you're correct like this is I, I've like backed her up before in situations like that <laughs> You know, on social media. So it's so weird that, like, this minor... And she said... And, like, I did delete it. That's the thing. I did delete it. Like, it was a post that was that people were thinking was funny. And yeah. it was getting, it was getting you know, social media clout, if you will. But, uh, like... I don't know about clout. Right. I mean, it, it was just people talking about it. Well, no. I mean, it just... My point is, like, it had likes. Like, you know, you know the, cl the website <laughs> clout, right? You know what I'm saying? Like... Oh, wow. Actually, yeah. Before, like, the slang of, like, having pull as being clout. Yes, clout originally started as just what gets engagement and how much engagement. That's what I'm saying, right. That's what I'm referencing. The, the engage. It, it was getting engagement, right? Like, and so, like, it doesn't matter. It's my personal Facebook page. It's not like I'm, it's not like a branding opportunity for me or anything. But, like, it, it was just, it was so weird. And, like, it's it made me think, like, wow, like, even if I make a mistake, like, you're never going to even give me the chance to either explain myself or or apo even apologize. And so right. I sent them a message after the fact, and I was like, hey, I'm really sorry that, like, I, I'm, I'm sorry this came across offensively. That was not my intention. Like, I, you know, I, I it sucks that, like, our entire relationship is, was, was, was canceled because of yeah. this, this, this one post that I didn't mean offensively. Right. And I tried to clarify it. And, like, I honestly don't think I'm going to hear back from this person. But, like, it sucks because it's, like, your worth is, like, so... It's like, I think life is like learning experiences, right? Like if, if me and you have an issue, if me and Katie have an issue, anything like that, like I don't get like super angry about it. I don't get super mad about it. I just like, hey, let's figure it out. Let's figure out how we can better work this. And then we'll we'll move from there. Like it's never like, well, you did this wrong this one time. So I'll see you later, man. Well, you know, mm -hmm. sorry, you don't get a second chance. Like it's so weird because I look at life as like learning. Like no one's perfect, right? We're all going through the same shit. Like every day I learn something new and I'm like, oh, this is cool. I'll, I'll do this from now on. I'll, I'll do this from now on. Like life isn't about like finding out exactly who you are and being rigid with that and never changing again. Life is about like evolving and, and becoming a little bit better every day. And like, well, yeah, but I also, I feel like right now you're trying to justify to me <coughs> that you're a good person and that you didn't mean anything by it, which like I completely get. Like, Cause I, that's my first, that's my first reaction when this happens. You know what I mean? Like. Like, because yeah. it's, it's, it's like, this is the, there's one comic, one web cartoon that I reference <clears throat> constantly. Um, and it's from the oatmeal. You might, you probably have seen it. It's about content creation, right? And it's the one that says like how I feel after reading 1000 insightful, positive comments about my work. And then there's a guy smiling that says the whole internet loves me. And then the next frame says how I feel after reading 1000 insightful, positive comments about my work and one negative comment. And then the dude is crying and it says the whole internet hates me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it's this feeling of like if one person doesn't appreciate this or, or like or even like gets offended or hurt by it, it invalidates like all the positive feedback that you've gotten is yeah. is negated. Well, right. Okay, but I think that like those are all your personal feelings which are entirely valid and I completely get it, but I think that the the, the funny thing in the the situation to talk about here <clears throat> is um just the what a silly time that woke culture or like you know like the social justice warrior culture is at where it's like bro like you're literally like you're digging for ways to get offended where that's not rad like choose your battles here because if people are going to be offended at literally everything you're ruining it for the times where you should actually educate a friend or something like that right? and like but i can see the i can see the counter the counterpoint where someone's like i'm not your teaching moment right and someone said that mm. before and and i like i understand it but on the other hand, like, it's never going to get better if, if you just choose to, like, let people be dumb. Like, you want to see a change in the world. And, like, a lot of people aren't going to do it. They're not going to take the time. I I personally will, <laughs> you know, because I, I believe in, like, improving things. But a lot of people are just fucking lazy and don't know any better. And, like, if you don't literally just explain to them, like, why something is wrong or why it, it offends you, like, or why it, it hurts you, like, they're just going to feel like you're being hypersensitive, you know, or, like, whatever. But, I mean... I, I think there's value in like even for me personally, like I think there's value in like educating people when they're willing to listen. If someone's willing to listen, 
like I don't think like sp- spiting that person is like the right course of action, you know, and and, and mm. like and I get that I I totally get that the burden does not fall upon you to educate someone. I get it. Like I get yeah. it. It's not your job. I understand. I'm not, no one is saying it is your job, but we're saying if we want to live in a society, um, where where people are are better to one another. Yeah. Like sometimes you might just have to. And if you don't, yeah, you don't. I mean, and I understand. And like if you don't, if you don't educate them and they don't improve as a person, that's not on you. It's still not your fault. Right? The blame never falls on you for not educating someone. But I'm just saying you might not be able to live in that world that you want to live in because sometimes people aren't just going to take the initiative and educate themselves. Yeah, I mean, I feel you. I think again though, I think that it's just a funny situation where like I love that we have a podcast to to discuss it because you can like literally just further elaborate being like, yo, I'm not a bad dude. But (laughs) it's just funny because I think that like your feelings got hurt because you meant as like something to be like, yo, wow, that's a crazy thing when you can like mean nothing. And then somebody's like, here's a chance for me to make you look like a bad dude. Right. And it sucks because like now I'm like, and, and I have no defense. I can't defend myself to this person. I just like look shitty. And it's like, but what? So wait, I can't even say this word. Like, the word itself just can't even be said because I, uh, I don't know, man. Like it's just, well, yeah, but like also check it out. Like what if you, there are certain words that <laughs> if you were like, Oh, what if you accidentally type blank? Like <laughs> I would just be like, I'm literally never typing and posting this on the internet. So if sure. you compare it to other words, then I guess I get it. Um, but, uh, but like yeah, I, I, I reverse the situation, right? Like I'm an Italian, I'm Italian American. Right. So like, so, like, some of our, our derogatory terms are, like, WAP or DAGO, right? Like, those are, like, the Italian slurs, right? And I'm thinking, like, if someone typed the same thing I typed and said, wow, I was typing this one word, and I realized that if I made one accidental typo, it would be, like, it would say DAGO, and that's a whole different day. Like, if I would, I would be, like, ooh, you're right. Good thing you didn't type that. Like, I'm acknowledging the person didn't type that. They didn't type it. It wasn't their intent to type it. And they're, they're acknowledging how how extreme the difference is between typing the word they wanted to and typing the word that they they accidentally might have you know what i mean like if you can acknowledge how extreme the difference is then you understand the the derogatory nature of the word does that make sense yeah but i think that it's just you know it's i don't like i we acknowledged it right like we everything that's been said there is said it's like yeah like it's it's ridiculous that people are looking for that but like you deleted it and you're like oh man that's super not what i meant my bad. and that's weird because it's like here's the thing like i don't want to delete my posts because i feel like i'm doing it at the at the you know at the i feel like i'm just like at the mercy of these people like who who want to who want to be like who just want to want to take issue with it and that's but like on the other hand like if this genuinely offends someone like i don't want to be responsible for that what if there's other people who got offended by this but didn't say anything like i don't i don't want to be responsible for that yeah i don't know i guess like when i think about it like when i'm thinking about like the whole thing of it is like i think that social media and the internet has just changed so much in times where i acknowledge right now is like a sensitive time of the internet and it really is cool, like like it's it's gotten to a point I, where like i personally only post things that are like it completely tame like not not like tame but like i don't know the word i'm looking for i can't think of the word but like <clears throat> it's not innocent it's not tame but like just kind of neutral you know what i mean like yeah, like i used to make political neutral. posts and be like bernie sanders is the best check out this check out this healthcare for all stuff and look what donald trump did like i would post stuff like that but then like it's just not worth dividing people like that it's just not worth having half of my half of, i mean more more than half probably being like yeah this is awesome this is great and then like 20 percent of people being like I, I watch you for magic not your political opinion and i'm just like <laughs> I'm like, this is my, and like, it got to a point where like, I have to defend my, I'm like, Dance magic monkey, man. yes. And I'm like, dude, this is my personal Facebook page where I talk to my parents and my aunts and uncles. Like if you want magic content, go fucking somewhere else. Cause this isn't, I, I don't owe you anything on this page, bro. Like it's just really like, it's so it's gotten to a point where like, I'd rather just avoid the issue altogether and mm-hmm. simply post neutral things. Right. Like mon, mon, not mundane thing. I can't think of the word. Yeah, like it's just like safe, safe like dogs and, and yeah. Like here's a funny meme that has nothing to do with race, sex, gender, or politics, and I'm like, or religion. You know, it's like, and I mean to be fair, like those are, those are sensitive topics. Like those are things people care deeply about. You know, and 
and I'm not, it's not like I, it's the funny thing is like, I don't even have that many things that I would ever post that would be offensive because I'm just not, I don't think I'm naturally an offensive person yeah, that like, you're the furthest from offensive. You're I'm like, tr- uh, yeah. Me. Like I'm always coming in, like, just like saying stupid shit and you're like, Andrew, come on. And I'm like, oh yeah, my bad. Yeah. I'm like, I feel like, yes, I'm like the exact opposite of the person who tries to be edgy. Like I try to like navigate the edgy person to like less edginess. You know, it's so funny. Like to accidentally uh became a real internet bad boy for a second right i'm like the i'm the guy that that neil degrasse tyson was like oh we got a real badass over here about like that's clearly me i'm well okay i'm just gonna go ahead and and deem you (laughs) the internet bad boy and i think that this is covered i think that god if we acknowledge you as an internet bad boy then it's like oh you know frank's he's a little out of pocket sometimes he's a real internet bad boy. the worst part is like i have friends i have friends on my my facebook page that are like that I have that that post regular interactions with guys that are shitty, right? Like female friends that are like, check out check out what this dude said, you know. And I'm like, and then and then it's forty of their friends just shaming that person and talking about how shitty he is and being like, nope, can't no nope, unfollowed that guy. And it's just like my my like <laughs> my like what's the word I'm looking for? I'm God. I feel like I'm getting like I feel like I'm losing my brain, right? Like my biggest my biggest fear is like having someone post that that out of context uh that out of context post where i don't get to defend myself i don't get to explain anything uh you don't get to see anything else that i've i've said ever and then just posting it and being like had to unfriend someone for posting this today right like and it's like come on like i don't know and i I have no idea if that's even like a thing like i have no idea if that really happens or if like or you know whatever I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't have that much more to say on it, to be honest. Because I'm just like, I have to just acknowledge. I'm like, oh man, that person really took the intention and the context out. It's weird so. to like to consider someone a friend, and then like while you were napping for an hour, before you wake up, that person is like no longer your friend, and at the risk of like posting how shitty you are, like that's a weird feeling to have, man. Yeah, it's. I, I think that that really shows the. the this is just an example of how comical being uh, woke and social justice warrior and all of those things. Like this is like the comical version of the wrong way to do it. And, and I, that. and I think there is a right way to do it. Sure. Let's like, if you said something that like I could have misconstrued, I would like unfriend you and be like, sorry, dude, we're done. Instead of being like, Hey Andrew, why don't you explain? Or why don't I just give you a heads up as to why this is offensive? like, it's not like she said this is offensive. And I was like too fucking bad my page i'll post what i want like i wasn't like it's like i didn't even have a chance to be shitty about it i was just like oh i didn't know i will i will take it down <laughs> and like she unfriended me like i could have like left it up you know at that point the the issue was gone it was over you know but i took it down anyway you know like this person doesn't even know i took it down like i had nothing to prove at that point you know so it's like it's just weird yeah it sucks. I feel you, dog. It's super shitty. Anyway, that was yeah. That was that was just my my afternoon today. Wow, that's rough. And by afternoon, I mean like this literally happened in the past like two hours. Like I I fell asleep when we were supposed to record the podcast. I woke up and that was like the result. And I was like, oh wow, that's not yeah. Because like Katie messaged me and she's like, this person seems mad at you. And I was like, what? Hold on, let me check. And then like I checked and I was like, oh geez, no, oh geez. And it's funny because oh geez. One of my friends that actually commented on that comment mm. is one of the biggest like proponents of social justice I know. I don't, I don't, I hate the fucking term social justice warrior because I think it's it's used condescendingly and I think it's used uh, as a derogatory term. Um, yeah, I think there are people who who stand up and fight for social justice, and I think those people are great. I ha- I I am one of them. I consider myself one of them. Um, but my friend David, like my friend David who commented on this, he was like, he's one of the strongest supporters of like social justice I know. And his comment was, don't be this person. <laughs> and I was like, wow, if this guy is telling you that like you're 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 taking this the wrong way, like that was an interesting dynamic there. I was just really surprised by that because you know, the, he he's it's just a competition to out social justice for each other right now. I'm I'm ooh, cat guy. Uh I'm I'm taking no part in it. Did you right now. see um, the new Aziz Ansari skit, the new Aziz Ansari oh, stand-up. It was so good. So this is what we're talking. Yeah, because he references that. He's like, it's just a competition to outwoke each other on like yeah. inter- Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Like everyone's just the next post is even more woke than that, and it's just like, okay, well, let's take a step back here. 
Yeah, no, it's totally that. Like, that happened to you <laughs> I, in real time. Yeah, I watched it twice. It was fantastic. <laughs> well, what else do we got? What else has happened this week? Oh. Ho, ho, ho. I don't I'm know. I'm to think what I've got for you. I have a couple. I, I brought couple something to the table. Man. You could bring an odds, bring an odds and end. You definitely brought some stuff to the table, for sure. Um, for I... sure and seven years ago. Oh, man. What do I have for you? Because I don't want to be the broken record. A lot of my life right now has been uh, just the leg recovery. Just a guy that's... Did something happen to your leg? Little... Well, no. I mean, I'm just... I'm, I'm... Every day is a little bit closer to walking it was a, again. It was a joke. I was just making oh. a joke, my dude. <laughs> because... Because we all know you are on crutches for probably the rest of your life, I think. I think that's it now. I'm so yeah. sorry, man. I'm oh, not. You know what? Actually, we touched on this a little bit last week, and I know that this is a podcast about nothing, but I think we're allowed to talk about what we do. And I haven't looked at really any of the spoilers of the new set. Uh, can I just get like the Frank Reader's Digest real quick? Oh, you know what's funny what's about that, know? actually? Like Someone oh. last week made a comment on the podcast. And uh, let me see what they can say. I, I, I got to find it real quick, but it's worth it's worth saying. Um, I actually did a set review just yesterday. Oh, did and, you? Yeah. And no. um, uh, well, then <laughs> I did a set review. So, yeah, if you want to talk about the cards, uh, you can check those out. It's only about three hours long. So I'm sure you got the time. <laughs> you did a three hour set review. <clears throat> so we break it into two parts. Each part's about what an hour and a half. Did you read the fucking flavor of every card? There's 260 cards in the set. So that's like less than that's like, what, 60? 120, 180. That's 180 minutes for 200 cards. That's less than a minute a card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it adds up. Like we split the we split the set into two, uh, so mm -hmm. it's about 124 cards and 129 cards for the two, for the two parts. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so it takes about an hour and a half each. I mean, it's huh. we go over every card in the set and we're like, not good, not good, very good. Why is it good? Like, there's a lot of cards. Okay, and so uh, give me like the Reader's Digest that that is would be fun to talk about podcast wise, where like we don't need to talk about specific cards, but just like what kind of gameplay, like what kind of interactions are we what are we talking here? That's way too broad. I will it's say that for our not what kind of gameplay and interactions, I don't yeah. even know how to answer that. Okay, well, like, is it like an aggro set? Is it? I don't. Uh, no, not really. I, I, it's hard to tell without playing for it. Like a lot yeah. of people, you can't even tell. Like even if you even if it like you see all the spoilers, it's hard to tell. Because yeah. things play out differently when you... Um, it's like looking at a bunch of ingredients on a table and trying to see, like, what it's going to be when you're done. You know what I mean? Like a bunch of random yeah. ingredients. I feel that. Um, oh, the, the comment I was mentioning was the last week with Adam. With Adam, uh, Someone said, slowly becoming an MTG podcast. Yes. And, <laughs> I, and I, replied, I replied to that and I was like, oh, this is what I was afraid of. Because I don't want to, like, alienate people who are not here for, for Magic the Gathering, you know? Yeah, that's true. Because if you and well, I just like, want to do a magic podcast, like, that's a totally different beast. It would be a terrible magic podcast. <laughs> the most casual. Um, But, I mean, it's, like, it's just a little topic. That's all. I don't know. I was just curious. I was curious in, like, a small talk fashion. Like, we don't need to get technical, but I was just like, oh, cool. Do we? My only concern is that only relates to the people who do like magic, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess so. So then, like, there's this portion of the podcast where people who don't like magic, they don't, they just have no idea. It's like, it's like Chinese. Well, but like, you know, uh, to me, if I have like a good, if I follow a good podcast and I enjoy the host's banter, I don't really care what they're talking about because I'm just like, oh, yeah, host banter. <laughs> um, I love host banter. Another, another topic right now uh, that I know you're not so much a part of, or I know that you're more on the Android side of things, but oh. the new iPhone did get announced and come out. Doesn't it have like I four have cameras thoughts. on the back? Three cameras on the back? Yeah. Something ridiculous? Triptotrichophobia? Is are you? Do you? What's the word? Trip, trip I, I know what you're talking about, and it's terrifying. Trip it makes it makes me it gives me chills. It's the it's the it's the fear of like small holes. Yeah. Yeah, it's really it's oh god, I'm like my neck is I'm getting shivers down my spine like just thinking about it. It's really wait. So you have it? I think a lot of people have it. It's unsettling to look at. Oh my god, so I was saying, oh like, I hadn't... <laughs> oh god, it's making my skin crawl, dude. <laughs> oh, he hates it. Oh god, like, I just... Because I'm picturing, like, those honeycombs and, like, on people's skin where they have all the little... Oh, I can't. Dude, yeah, okay. So, 
my there's an iPhone billboard right now that I saw. Oh, keep, oh god! Ah. Yeah. I'm trying to shake it. I'm trying to like. Oh god! It's just like. It just makes me. It makes me get shivers. Like like if I have a. Oh god! Just go on. Okay, there's an iPhone billboard. iPhone billboard. <laughs> no, I just the the three cameras like it makes it, it reminds me of that and i'm like ooh that's uncomfortable and i'm like i wonder if anybody with tryptophobia i hope try is it oh god i don't know how, i don't know i think it's tryptophobia but i'm 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 probably not saying uh it's tri- i'm going to see if i can find a way to pronounce it google iphone with that it's tri- it's like trip whole... tripophobia t r y p o p h o b i a Okay, but trypophobia iPhone, because that's my, <laughs> like, all, like, capabilities aside and all that, I'm just like, yo, some people are not buying that shit because it's just going to, it's just going to fuck up their I Googled it, and there's an, there's an article by Mental Floss that says the new iPhone 11 is triggering people with trypophobia. <laughs> yo, right? And I, like, I, up until just now saying this to you, it was just a thought in my head. I was like, wow, there's a CNN a article that said they're like, new iPhone's trypophobic design disturbs people with a fear of holes. Oh my god, I called that shit. Yeah, that's really weird. That was my first thought. Dude, um, if don't just don't Google trypophobia and then go to the images cuz you'll oh, oh, I did it. I, I don't have it. I don't have it and I still look at it and I'm like, "Oh." But but doesn't that mean you do have it? Well, it's not so bad. Like I can like I can look at it. You know, like it, it's it's not like it actually messes me up, but I'm just like, oh, I get that. Like I'm like, oh, that's weird. My cringe is so it's so strong, it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm like, maybe it's just mental, but then I look at it and I just like get. I'm not like grossed out. I can look at it, but like, my body has a visceral reaction that I'm not like not even oh, like I'm not even trying to have. It's just like a weird what? like a shiver or What's like a sound. Does everybody have a sound? I know I have one, and I always think it's funny when I hear other people's that don't bother me. You mean like um, what do you mean like, like a sound like that really like freaks you out? Yeah, like the goosebump sound, like mine. <laughs> I just thought about it. <laughs> 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 I hate. Oh god, I don't even like this. I hate the sound of metal or like silverware scraping like a ceramic plate or like when oh (laughs) god that's so bad dude i can't do it but certain people are like styrofoam and all that do you have a sound what about like aluminum foil in your mouth like chewing on aluminum foil yeah yeah that one it does nothing to me are you serious what if you put Um, aluminum foil in your mouth and you drink some orange juice what would that do it tastes disgusting okay I don't know if I do have a sound, but that ceramic and silverware sound is just terrible. But, like, I have to, like, leave the room. Like, if I hear it, I, I can't. It's, like, <laughs> it's a really weird sound. Like, it's it's so, yeah, I could definitely, I could, like, if you're cutting, if you're using a knife to cut and the knife hits the ceramic and you're just, like, it gets so bad. I don't even like to think about it. Just you describing it fucks me up. Yeah, that's Ooh. not a good one. That's not a good. One. I, Ooh, I just, I know there's got to be a sound that I just can't can't stand, but I don't know what it is to be quite honest. You don't have. Get back to me, I guess. I probably have one. I just have no idea what it is. Yeah, interesting. I wonder how common that is, though, right? Because I like to think of myself as pretty normal, and like, there's most like there's most settings where I can keep it together. Like, if I was in a social setting and I was like, oh yeah, I'm hearing this and it's off putting. Like, I would be like, yeah, okay, cool, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, like, I know, like, it's funny because I know I've heard things where I'm like, well, that's abrasive. That is not a friendly sound. Yeah. So, anyway, you have any thoughts on the iPhone? You're not switching for it? <laughs> I've never switched for the iPhone just because, I don't know. I feel like I've always had reasons, but I've never really been able to. I like I like the idea of having an an, Air, an iPod, uh, not an iPad, uh, an iPad, and AirPods, and an iPhone. But it's funny because I have AirPods and an iPad and an Android phone. Yeah. But also, like all my all my apps are Android now. Like all my inform, all my logins are Android. Like it's so hard to like to just change everything over and start over. You know? Is it? See, because I feel like being an iPhone person, like you, we all know like the memes and everybody makes fun of the green texts and all that. But at this point, like, are you just holding strong to prove a point, or is it that you really feel at home with the apps? There's now? nothing. There's nothing I don't enjoy about Android. It's not like I feel like I'm missing some portion of my my cell phone experience you know what i mean like android's clearly a a a flagship 
flagship operating system in, in phone technology, right? Like, I mean, the biggest competitor for, for iPhones is literally like notes and galaxies and like, like it's not like it's, it's not like it's not close. You know what I mean? Totally. Do you feel like we've hit like a, a bit of a shelf with technology? I've been thinking that. All- no, not even close. Cause whenever I think we've hit a shelf, like, then they come out with like the Samsung Fold, where it's like the Galaxy Fold or whatever, where it's like a literally a phone that can unfold and be like a tablet, like mm. the screen itself unfolds. Have you seen this? Mm, I feel like I've seen ads, but I haven't really looked too close to it. Is, is it, that's an actual like that's in production? Like it's. Uh yeah, it's they've had quite a few samples. It's called the Galaxy Fold. I'll show it to you in the in the thing, and you can take a gander. Okay. Yeah, it's literally just like a phone the size of like an iPhone, but it folds in half so that you get you can open it up, and uh, you get like a twice as twice as large phone. Like it's like like half the size, or like maybe sixty percent the size of an iPad. So like you have a tablet that unfolds from your telephone. What happens if you just want to uh, uh, chill on it halfway? Then you close it, and there's a screen on the outside. Oh, it's like triple screen. It's audio. it's it's crazy. Yeah, like it's not even like. Yeah, I mean, like that's what I mean. Like this is what I'm talking about. Like where it's like, I think like, there I don't like the ceiling is just not a thing. You know what I mean? Like it's just we're just gonna keep innovating. We're just gonna keep coming out with new shit. Yeah, I feel like you know I don't know. Maybe that's just to say more on like the Apple like iPhone line. Like I think they did a really good job. Like overall it seems like customers really just want nice cameras. So they like doubled down on the camera yeah. side of things. That's cool. My, um, I was gonna say my biggest concern with like iPhones in general and, and Apple products in general, I think is that they're so proprietary that they only let you use their things, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, like I needed a new, okay, my, I need, I want to charge my, my, my AirPods. The only way to do it is with a USB lightning cable, with an Apple lightning cable. So, like, I had to literally buy an ex- a lightning cable that works for no other device of mine, mm-hmm. you know? And, like, yeah, you know, I'm, I was grateful that my, that my AirPods actually work with my with my Android phone because I really like them. I, I think they're a great product. I'm surprised by that. I yeah. didn't even think <laughs> about that. You could do that. Yeah, because they're just, they're just USB headphones, essentially. But, like, I can also double tap on them to, to pause them and whatever. Um, oh, it still works. Yeah. The only thing that doesn't work is like swiping up and down for volume, but like the double tap to pause and play still works. And that, I was like, that's that's cool enough for me, especially because I mean swiping they come up with their. Down for volume? Yeah, you can do that on the AirPods. What? Yeah, on the stem, you can if you swipe down, it'll lower the volume. If you swipe up, it'll raise the volume. No freaking. Did way. you not know that? What? This is another thing. That's another thing that gets me about technology is that there's no instruction manuals anymore. There's so many times where I'm like, how did you do that on your phone? And like, they're, oh, like, you just have to tap, double tap with two fingers and then drag down. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Because how would I have ever known that? Oh, my God. You're going to try this right now? Yeah, I'm going to try it right now. This is now. ridiculous. Oh, no, no, no. That's not true because you Googled. You Googled the thing, so I get okay. to try this. Sure. Well, I Googled it for both our benefit. You're just trying this for your benefit, buddy. I'm doing it on stream, though. Okay. Doesn't work. Am I doing it right? I don't know. You should be. I don't think this works, man. Hold on. Are you sure that's a thing? Yeah. I don't think this works. Changing the volume on Apple's AirPod requires either using the volume buttons on your phone or using Siri to increase uh, while you're... Oh, wait. Interesting. Huh. Maybe it's not a thing. Maybe I just lied to everybody. Yeah. Yo, I was like, that's the sickest shit ever. You just got me over here looking like I'm scratching my ear. Hold on. That shit's sick. That's a great idea. What's up? Come at us, Apple. Where did I read that then? I wonder where I read that. We're here to develop some shit. Yeah, no, this isn't doing anything. Myth busted. That's weird. You're welcome, podcast. We brought you some value. It's I I have AirPods too. I have the number twos. Somebody in the chat asked if we had if it's AirPods too. They connect faster to your phone. That's about all they do. That's different. They're really not that special. I'm I'm so like I'm so I I'm like wondering where I where I read this then. Like I'm really kind of blown away right now. Hmm. 
Um, yeah, if that's a thing, maybe it's like built in like where it could later. That'd be fucking sick. Uh, I have another thing that I thought about. It's pretty regular. It's a pretty regular point of discussion, but um, I know that you like superhero movies a lot, and yeah. this one might be one that I like. What's up with this new Joker movie? I mean, it looks amazing, but it's barely a superhero movie. So I'm going to like it. It's literally just a character in a comic book that they made a movie about. Like, yeah, no, it's like, I, I don't think it's... um. I, I, I wouldn't consider... Because they even said, like, it's not going to be, like, a part of the the DC universe. It's not going to, they're never going to have a movie with Batman in it. Like relating to this Joker. It's literally just a standalone movie about like a Joker origin story with, with Joaquin Phoenix. And as that, it looks amazing. Like it looks incredible. Okay. Okay. So you're not going to treat it like a superhero movie. So for the same reason why I think I would like a superhero movie is you being like, well, you count. Say that last part again. Okay, so for me being excited that right. it's not a typical superhero movie, you're just like, well, yeah, it's, it's it's really barely a superhero movie. It is, yeah. It's definitely barely a superhero movie. Like, it's literally, like, the only connection to a superhero movie is that it has a character from a comic book in it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, there's no there's no hero in it, to be, to, be, to be literal. Like, there's no superhero in the movie. Like, it's just based on a comic character. Mm. Wait, what? Well, I don't know. I was just thinking. I was just like, mm, damn. I didn't. I only saw the trailer. Well, it's still fine. I don't think that's. I don't think that's a. I don't think that's a mark against it by any means. I think it's still really like it looks fantastic, and I wouldn't be surprised if Joaquin Phoenix walked away with an Oscar for this bad boy because he, the dude, looks like he blows it away. Tie it. So you are gonna see it. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm gonna try to see that thing opening day. Oh dang. Oh dang. You know, um, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the ArcLight Theater that let's, they drive by? Let's talk about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but... Um, let's fucking go, bud. I think so. That's, uh, it's like down the street from my house. It's not too far, and I've never seen... That's awesome. Yet. I love old-timey Hollywood. Does it still look the same? Yeah, so, I mean, like, obviously everything's built up around it, but, like, it's still the same, like... Are we talking about the one Shannon Tate goes to see the movie in? Oh no, that one's there too. Okay, that's on the that's on the west side of town, and that's like that looks pretty similar. But I'm talking about the very end. There's like that, like it looks like the, it looks like the Epcot ball. I don't know if I do remember it. Yeah, I'm sure if I saw it, it would. It was so funny because I was gonna be like, hey, did you see, you saw? So you saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and then I was like, wait, wait. We saw it together. <laughs> we with saw Dan. it together with Dan's. Yeah, that was, it was uh, a good time. It's weird. I really want to see it again. I really want to see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood again. I feel like I... I don't know if I appreciate it the first time. Like, I feel like it, I didn't know what was going on. Like, I felt like the plot was... I was just watching things happen, and I didn't know why. You know what I mean? Totally. Well, dude, like, I went into it completely blind with you. Like, oh, yeah. Cool. Who's... And, like, Leo and Brad Pitt. I was like, no way. Let's go. I didn't even know it was a Terrence. it was great was yeah great. which is funny because i was really building it up and i was like oh man i hope this is good and i feel like when i went into it like when i got out of it rather i was like i don't know what i just watched but like the more i think about it i liked all the individual parts of it you know what i mean i've been thinking about it a bit i think it, i, I want to watch it again it was fun i would 100 percent watch it again yeah all right so um, let's let's go again when are you free um when are you and Katie coming to LA? God, uh, that would be that would be fantastic. Yeah. Did you know that Tarantino had his own little movie theater here? No. Yeah, apparently I know they he, play like old karate movies. I stuff. know he worked at a movie theater and that was how he got interested in cinema. And uh, really? yeah, that was his like origin story. Here we are, just hitting the old Google. Um New Beverly Cinema. Hmm. Yeah. And it's like a tiny little guy. Oh, cool. Oh, dude, <laughs> well, they play. A, what an emotional roller coaster you're like, putting us on. Oh, <laughs> cool. Oh, oh, uh, because they've been playing a bunch. Of, they've been playing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood a whole bunch in it. And I'm wow. Like, wait, oh, you're cool. saying, wait, you're saying uh, Quentin Tarantino's own theater is playing his movie. I know. It's crazy. Wow. Right? Who saw that? Can you imagine making a movie, but then owning a movie theater and playing that movie? And then so it's like you're getting like you're making money off of the movie yourself you're making money off your own movie at your own theater yeah that's sick that's a crazy feeling 
But they play like all sorts of other random stuff. Like they're playing Jackie Brown at midnight and oh, or hey there, it's Yogi Bear. And then Mulholland, David Lynch's Mulholland Drive and Criss Cross. Like they play how like much, a bunch of like. How much movies. David Lynch have you seen? Not much at all. What's, What's he done? Anything's uh, Blue Velvet, Mulholland Drive. Uh, he did Twin Peaks. Oh, he did Twin. He did the show Twin Peaks. Yeah, have you seen Twin Peaks? Uh, I have seen Twin Peaks. Really? I didn't watch the whole thing. Yeah. Why didn't you? Why didn't you watch the whole thing? Um, I, I don't really know. I don't really got an answer for you. It's interesting. Me and my friend David actually watched all of Twin Peaks together. Uh, we like binged it over like several weekends for, um, you know, for a while, and 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 got and just watched all of season one and two, and like. It's a very interesting show, but it's also a show where you're like, what the fuck is going on on this show, dude? Totally. Yeah. Well, and like, I think that I maybe wasn't like ready. I think I was probably just like, not like, um, in the right mindset. I think I wanted something more digestible. It's not digestible at all. It's, it's something that like, it takes a long time to digest. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a show that like, you want to keep going back to and you're like, so wait, what's going on? Who is this? Why is this relevant? What does this mean? What's the point of this? Who is this person? Which I really respect. Like most right. of the time, I like that a lot. But I think that that's, that has to be why. Because I remember hearing about it. There's a lot like, going on. Really There's a lot going on in Twin Peaks. Mm. And like I was lucky enough to have like David. David is a huge David Lynch fan. And he was like telling me like subtle things or things that were going on or things that meant different things in the show and i was just like oh that's interesting i probably wouldn't have caught that on my own and so there's a ton of stuff that i was just like lucky to have someone who knew uh you know watching it with me you know what i mean yeah 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 you it's like you need a guide through the show yeah oh, you for know sure <laughs> i have a i have a funny a funny part um maybe maybe we can get a social justice warrior to get upset at me for saying this I, uh, your face right now, you're just like, oh God. Um, I just watched Get Out for the first time. Get Out's fantastic. I am so afraid of white people. Oh, I'm, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on record right now on this podcast and say that I think white people are the most dangerous people in the world. Holy hell, that I don't me, think that it's movie close. Made me, oh, oh man. That movie was fucking crazy, my guy. It's I know so I'm good, though. It's so party. good. Late to the party. That's fine. I don't think I don't think we've run out of time for like. Sorry, Andrew, it's too late for you to appreciate Get Out now. Mm -hmm. That was a movie though that I liked because um, you were saying like there's layers to it and like you need somebody to kind of guide you through it. And I watched it and I was really proud of myself. Do you ever like pick up pick up on things in movies? And even though it's your first time watching, you like catch things and you're like, "Ooh, I'm so smart." Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I did that a couple times in that movie, so I felt like a real movie critic. What did what specifically? All right, so um, the the character in the very beginning of the movie, like the opening scene, homie's walking down the street and that white Porsche 940. Oh, Porsche yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. Yeah, yeah. So I saw him and I recognized him because I was like, oh, he's in Atlanta. He's an Atlanta guy, yeah. So then when you see him later on and like... He, <gasps> oh, like, I didn't put that together. Him. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I was like, that's the fucking guy. And like so quickly, I was like, wait, something's wrong here. Where, like, it, at first you just be like, oh, yeah, there's, like, another, like, weird, like, ritzy fucking country club dude. Yeah. Where no, I was like, but, nah, nah, but nah. But he's definitely not that because you see him in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was – I felt like I was rewarded for watching Atlanta. Also, cool. at, also, Atlanta is also fantastic. Dude, you know what was super cool? Here's a little shameless plug for my other podcast where all my friends was I had Ernie Gilbert on the show two weeks ago. And he is the editor. He edited This Is America, the music video. Oh, wow. That's and, impressive. Yeah, super cool. And then he's, I, I'm bad at like film and TV terms, but he's, I think, the assistant editor, um, but works very closely with Hiro Mirai and Donald Glover on also Atlanta. And he does like HBO shows too. That seems sick. Yeah, it was so cool. It was that's such a, a fun podcast. It's cool because you're one degree from like those guys. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I'm, like, a huge Donald Glover fan. So that on its own, I was like, this is fucking sick. Donald Glover is but fantastic. Then, but that whole cast, the whole Atlanta cast is fantastic, dude. Everything about that show. Darius is, like, my favorite great. character on the show. Like, he's... Like, they did that one Darius-centric episode where, like, he was... Oh, the Teddy Perkins episode is, like, the best Atlanta episode there is, dude. 
Wait, Teddy Pry- is that the one uh, where the dude feels like Michael Jackson? Yes, and the- he's like, oh, yeah. yes, welcome. Yeah, like the the super dude. weirdo. Like uh, that 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 Teddy Perkins is actually played by Donald Glover. Yeah, which I didn't know. That shit's crazy. Yeah. So if you guys um, if you guys haven't watched Atlanta, definitely watch Atlanta. It's a really really good show. Yeah, that's a Franz recommend. I think they're if going into season uh, three now. If you trust us on a good woodwick candle, you're gonna trust <laughs> us on Atlanta. <laughs> Also, we're looking for sponsors, so Atlanta or Woodwick Candles, reach out to us if you guys are listening. That's who. That's uh, the only ones we're accepting right now. We are open to other offers, though, so just send them over to us as well. Well, actually, I would. What what other sponsors? I would accept Reese's. I'll shamelessly plug. Okay, like, so here's the thing, dude. Expensive. I think if we got an, a, a, like a candy we kind of liked but didn't love as much as a Reese's, we'd still probably take it because it's probably a good deal. I'm Reese's or bust. Also, you say Reese's. Do you say Reese's? I say Reese's. Reese's. Reese. Yeah, like if the man's name is Reese or woman. Reese's. The founder's name is Reese. Reese's. Oh, fuck. This is going to fuck me up, dude. Who? Google. <laughs> Who <laughs> invented? <laughs> this is going to fuck me up. Reese's cups. Reese's. Why do I say Let's Reese's? And what why... the fuck? Harry Burnett? What is this? Tra- oh. Oh. He named them after his daughter, Reese's. What the fuck is this? H.B. Harry Burnett. H.B. H.B. Reese? That's Harry Burnett Reese. That's totally a different name. Reese's or Reese's? He's an American inventor. He is listed as an inventor. That is such a flex. That's what I want my, yeah, that's what I want my description to be. Oh, okay. But he goes by H.B. Reese. So that's fine. I'll let that go. Reese's. Reese's. Mm-hmm. And Andrews, Andrews, Frank, Reese's. Frankies, Reese, Reese. Franks, Reeses, Reese. Reeses. This is Reese's. fucking up my brain. I can't talk like this. I can't do it's it. Like when you say a word, it's losing all its watch. meaning. Yeah, it's lost it all. I it have had no meaning at all. It's just the last name. I have no I idea. Accept Reese's sponsorships. No, I'm I'm a bus. <laughs> I'm I'm Reese's or bus. So if Twix was like, hey, we want to sponsor your your podcast, we'll give you X money a month and all the Twix you can eat, you'd be like, no. I can't in good faith. You're so full of shit. They're not asking you to say it's better. They're just getting it to you. <laughs> that's that's the contract. It's like when you get a podcast sponsorship, if it ever gets brought up, you have to say that, that it's better than anything else. Better. Yeah. It's like, what's your favorite car? What's your favorite car? Porsche. It's, it's like if brand. it's like if Lamborghini came to us and gave yeah. us and was like, hey guys, I would love to sponsor your podcast. We can give you Lamborghinis each. And, uh, you know, we'll give you obviously, uh, monthly, monthly expenses and stuff, income and stuff. And, uh, all you have to do is say, you know, you could just have to promote the brand. Yeah. And Andrew would be like, no, I want to hold out for Porsche. Yeah. And, but it's like, that's, there's no way in, in the universe that that would actually happen. You would never do that. Cause you're not a, cause you're not a moron. Like, <laughs> Are you calling Twix the Lamborghini of candy? No. I don't know. In all, in all good faith, are you Twix is good, dude. And say, it's good. Sure. It's got a cookie crunch, man. I mean, heck, Twix is right. the only candy with the cookie crunch. That's from I'll Seinfeld. Put Twix. I'll give it. I'll put it in a, a, a an Audi category. I'd say it's the. That's Audi still good. Candy. What do you think? It's, okay, yeah, so we're saying Reese's is the the Porsche of candy. It is. What's it the class. what's the it what's is. the Lamborghini of candy? Okay, so Lamborghini is very loud, in your face, flashy. So what is that in candy? Loud, in your face, and flashy. It has to be like yeah, like it's like a very attention grabbing. It's like a like Snickers. What? Well, no, Snickers is safe. Is Snickers it? Snickers is. I think Milky Snickers Way is, is safe. safe. Snickers is safe, I guess. Yo, you know what the fuck it might be? Tell me. It might be like Mounds. Skittles. Oh, Mounds is interesting. Oh no, it's Skittles. It's absolutely Skittles. Skittles, right? Like it's so loud. It's such a loud candy. It's absolutely Skittles, and the colors too. Right, like, that's what I mean. Right, Lamborghinis look like Skittles. Like it's loud audibly. It's loud in color, and it's even loud in taste. Like the taste is also very like vibrant. Yeah, and their commercials are all ridiculous and crazy. I mean, Lamborghini doesn't really make commercials, but like they're ridiculous right. And but crazy. yeah. But I'm, we're just saying, like it, the whole picture is the, these guys. These guys are crazy, and their their commercials are great. Skittles commercials are actually regularly, consistently hilarious. I would say that Reese's are the Porsche of candy. Yeah. 
best because they get it done. They're debatably the best, yet they're very classy. What's the Rolls Royce of candy? Toblerone. Oh, that's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. You can. I, I hear you can go to the Toblerone website and actually customize your own Toblerone package and have it sent to you. Really? I feel yeah, like, like a large, like a large, large Toblerone. You can have it customized. Our pal Jeremy once sent me a chocolate dick. Huh. It was a whole chocolate dick, and you opened, and it said, eat a dick. Personalized but... Toblerone with your name on it. Yeah, you can put your name on it. But I'm pretty sure <laughs> you can put whatever name on I it. I thought for two seconds you were going to say, personalized chocolate dick. <laughs> it had Andrew's name on the side of it. <laughs> it was delicious. So you can get a personalized Toblerone? Yeah. It <laughs> says you can get your name on it, but I'm like, but you don't know my name. I'll put whatever I want on there. What would you what would you put on a Toblerone? I don't it would it would be totally event centric, right? Like I'd have to I'd have to figure out what I'd want to do with it. Yeah. But I could see I could see using it as like a, a really like like you could write like Will you marry me on a Toblerone and give it to someone? I think that's pretty cute, but like I mean there's a lot of things you can do with customization on a on a on a commercial candy bar, you know what I mean? Okay, I figured it out, and this is a callback to an old podcast episode of ours. I'm listening. Okay, remember how we were talking about how, uh, how like such big fans we are of Seinfeld and Curb? Yes. And I was saying that I want to burn the podcast on a CD for Larry David to tell him that we talked to him about him on it. Yeah. I want to get a Larry David Toblerone. Is it just going to say Larry David on it? And then in like a fortune, yeah. And then in a fortune cookie like piece of paper, I'm going to put a download link or the URL to the podcast. And I'm going to put the little Spotify barcode so you can scan it. I worry that you'd seem super crazy. He's not going to scan a barcode. I don't think he would, but he also wouldn't listen to my mix CD. But if I said, <laughs> Mr. David, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I got this Larry David Toblerone for you. Inside of it, there's a download code for our podcast. You know what actually... Machine. You know what... I wrote the time <laughs> on as well. You know what actually probably doesn't happen to Larry David that often? Hmm. People probably don't uh, frequently shill him things for him to listen to or read. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. You picked up that I was joking. Because that probably happens all the fucking time, and it's the last thing he ever wants. Well, I thought about it, and at first in my head I was like, wait, Frank, I bet you they do quite a lot. And, and you're like, like, oh. <laughs> oh, that was and his then, point. Then I thought about it, and I was like, well, damn. Who's ever handed him a Toblerone? Yeah, but the, again, you have a stranger, an extremely famous stranger, accepting. Not that famous. No, wow, <laughs> Ex <laughs> accepting food from another stranger that he has no idea who he is. Like, I would yeah. never. If you handed me something and I was like Brad Pitt, Larry David level famous, I would never eat any anything you gave me. That's true. The gain, the 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 risk is a thousand, and the reward is like one. Because it's I could just own, right, which you can just buy. I could literally buy one in in ten feet from me at any at any given point. On like my like early van touring days with set it off, like fans would make us the most ridiculous things, like homemade gifts and all that. Because you're and like a, you're gonna make us. Go ahead, go ahead. They'd make us like baked goods. And yeah, like I remember you stuff. telling me this. Yeah, which was awesome, mm -hmm. and like we like our friends at home were like, "Aren't you worried?" And I'm like, "Like we're not big enough." Not. Come on, we're not. What do you, what do you think this is? It's like, literally the Seinfeld so episode wildly. where he's not. Where he's like, I'm not bombable. Come on, I'm not bombable. <laughs> Remember, like they're worried about getting a mail, like a mail bomb. No, I I still haven't seen the show. The oh. laugh track. How? Wait, you haven't seen any Seinfeld? I've seen like the bits, right? Like it's impossible not to see any. But as like a cognizant adult that would understand every bit of the humor and not being like a kid watching when your parents watch or something, you need to like watch that, it. I haven't watched it. I'm sorry, you just have to put because some time. Because the laugh track, dude. I'm trying to get over the laugh. Get track. over it. it kills me. There's an episode where Jerry gets a package and you don't know who's it's from, and he's worried about it being a bomb. And George is like, "Please, you think you are bombable?" And it's a joke yeah. because like, because this is right around like when the Unabomber was sending packages and stuff, and he's like, "I don't know, it could be a bomb." And George is like. You're not bombable, trust me. Like, they're not big enough for someone yeah. to, like, have enough animosity towards them to, to, yeah. to send them a bomb. Like, no one's going to put that kind of effort into it, you know? Right. 
And it's like there's no one sitting at home being like, I'm going to make these brownies and I'm going to kill them with these brownies. Like, totally. no one hates you or set it off enough because you're not, you're just not big enough, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Cody once got roofied. Wow, that's actually pretty frightening. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, like, luckily, like, we were with him and we took care of him. It was fine. But, like, we were at the Orpheum, which was, like, our hometown venue. And we, they, like, do, like, sink or swim nights after shows. That's a yikes we for me, dog. Like, <laughs> what? The, Getting the roofied. Thing. No, yeah, go, yeah. Oh, keep I going. thought you were saying sink or swim. And I'm no. Like, Why? It's a great <laughs> um, but no, yeah, so we were just, like, partying and, you know, just, like, drinking and enjoying sink or swim. And, uh, I said partying and I like had this thought in my head where I was like, why does that automatically mean drugs? Like I, it really does. Like it has a very bad connotation. Like whenever I think party, I think I'm like, everyone is absolutely shit face drunk. No one is sober. No one's just having a conversation with someone else. Like it's literally like debauchery. It's It's like the most extreme debauchery. I think that party, like when you say it like that, Hey bro, you want to party? Partying. It's like drugs where I said that and I was like, no, that's not true. Like Like if I was like, Hey Andrew, you want to party later? You'd be like, yeah, like, oh, he's asking me if I want to do drugs. Because it's not us saying, like, yo, let's throw a party. Let's have a party. Come to this party. Right. Do you want a party later? I don't know. It's weird. It has a weird connotation. Yeah. There. English is funny. It's like typing an I instead of an O. Oh. It's funny. It changes the entire it changes the entire context. It really does. But anyway, we were at Sink or Swim, and we were just drinking and fucking enjoying the night um, after the show. And Cody started acting super weird, and he was like, it just felt like he was like too drunk and we're like, all right, let's go home. And then on the like way home, he's like just talking so incoherently. And like, we had to stop to like, let him pee. And it was like, dude, hold it. And it was just like, wait, no, like he has to pee. It's like, all right. And then he like gets back and then we parked and he peed on our van. And I was like, you're peeing on our home. And he was completely gone. And then he passed out uh, at one of our band members houses and he woke up the next day and he himself took all his clothes off. Like he was like, our band members like parents house and like hey your friend is on the couch naked. oh dear god <laughs> yeah it was a wild time okay, so you're... luckily nothing no harm came out of it so i can tell the story in like a laughable way but that was crazy that's probably the worst thing that happened to us like that oh boy well i mean i think that's pretty good if that's all that ever happened right like that's yeah not terrible I mean, like, people, like, broke into the van and, like, tried to steal petty stuff. Sure, was, but that's not, like, things, that's but. not an act of trust that was, uh, that was, that betrayed you. You know what I mean? That's not, like, someone you know or someone that was, yeah. that was extending something generous and it actually turned out to be, um, you know, a snake, you know, or whatever. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Which I think is the more, like, that's the more apt comparison because we're talking about, like, giving someone a gift like a Toblerone and mm-hmm. maybe, maybe it's poison. Who knows? You know? Why don't you get a custom Toblerone that just says, this is poison? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's actually pretty funny. And then you give it to someone and they're like, should I eat this? And I'm like, yeah, why would, wouldn't you? And they're like, well, it says this is poison. I'm like, oh, that's just a joke. Don't worry about it. Do you, yeah. Do you think that Toblerone lets you manufacture it? Or do you think you get an email where they're like, hey, bud. Sorry, dude. We can't write this is poison on our Toblerone. Like, because it also looks bad for them. You know what I mean? Like, it's totally. like if you, if it's like if you emailed, uh, Porsche and you were like hey I want a custom paint job and I wanted to say this car is shit on the side right like they're and they're like, like well, come on man they're like buddy for the money you're paying we're still we're not going to do that because you obviously respect the fact that this is a uh, an automobile with prestige so prestige yes um I also think about that like when you know how you can get like custom engravings and stuff like that yeah um, like what's even, the like, limit right exactly like like uh even like little like stupid things uh like amongst friends right like like if you order your friend an ipod and on the back you write like i eat ass or something like that because like, you just have to have that forever like, not only that but like they have to engrave it like they have to program it into their system and type it out and like correct like do they draw a line i don't know it's i do know that i had a cap i have a capital one card and it's one of those cards where you can actually put your own images on you know yeah. like you can change the the picture on it and I've tried so many different times to get a magic card art on there. Like different arts. Like I've tried Cryptic Command, I've tried Leovold. And I try to like I try to find different images to download. I try to put them through like a minor Photoshop filter 
so that it won't yeah. like so it won't like recognize and like whatever image they have like whatever image rec- recognition program they have never works never goes through because it's all copywritten. But I'm like it's weird right. because I'm not profiting off this card. I'm not going to sell it. So it's weird that that's a dis- that's a like a thing that they have like in place where like you can't get a copywritten image. But I'm like, why? It's not commercial. Like I can't. It's my credit card. If anything, I'm right. using it to spend money, not making money off of it. So it's just a weird. Yeah, that is funny. And like, what a weird like filter. I never right. Like I put a, I put like cr- the cryptic command art was one of the one of the things I uploaded into their into their system. And then like a few days later, I was like, well, they they, they sent me back an email and they're like, sorry, we can't use this art. And I was like, that's so weird. Like, how do you know fucking cryptic command? Which you is know, a magic I'll take card that a step things. further actually, because my Bank of America debit card is an AOPA card. Which is an aircraft owners and pilots association card? You don't. You're not one. You're. You don't. That's none of you. I know. And they don't. You can just get it. <laughs> Which is sick because I'm like, oh me, yeah, I'm an aircraft owner. Of course I am. Obviously. I have an I have an Uber visa just because it has great perks. And every time I use it, people are like, oh, do you work for Uber? And I'm like, no, it's just a credit card. I've watched. That like happen. if I have a yeah, if I have a Delta credit card, you're not gonna be like, oh, do you work for Delta? No. <laughs> No, I own Delta, actually. <laughs> so I'm like, work for Delta, <laughs> please. Uber, this... I started that. Here, have a own. This is poison. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're on to me, have this poisonous Toblerone. Oh. It has a download link to our podcast, but you won't need that because you'll be poisoned. Because you'll be dead. <laughs> yes. No, but for real, eat the Toblerone. It's delicious. Yeah, for real. Uh, we're at an hour. Yeah, this is perfect. That's a perfect stopping point. Yeah, eat the Toblerone. It's and this and this car is shit," said the uh, said the Porsche owner. So <laughs> I'm gonna go get some food. Thank you guys so much for listening. As always, really appreciate you guys. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. I guess you can find us on iTunes, not iTunes, Google Pod, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and Apple Podcasts. Yep, That's and so much weirder than iTunes. Podcasts are found. Yeah, and uh, be sure to give us a subscribe, and uh, we appreciate Get it. Get a subscribe. Oh, hey, I have an idea. I'm I wanted listening. to do this. Let me. Yo, what if, uh, because Apple feedback on podcasts helps a lot, and I was thinking about, because this is a podcast about nothing where we can talk about any topic, if people rate us five stars and leave a review, and in the review, give us a topic, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yo, right? Kind of cool. That's a great idea. It gives us, it also gives us uh, things to talk about. You're helping us with the reviews, and then we get to talk about your ridiculous topics. Yeah. Topics. 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 John Reese's. Reese's. All right. Duh, that's uh, going to fuck me up for a while. I need to figure out. I need to get my life right. Yeah, I might actually read a little bit more about him. It says his parents were dairy farmers. I, okay. Well, that's great. You, you let us know what you find out next week. I'm hitting stop on my thing now. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Really appreciate it.